to play or not to play? That is, in fact, the question for college football in the fall of 2020. And that's what we're going to be talking about today on Midwest Sports Net. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the content here, please do consider subscribing to this channel, Midwest Sports Net, where we talk about small college sports and more. We're going to be looking at the differences between how these two affiliations are handling the current health situation in our country and moving forward with football in the 2020-2021 academic year. And we're not going to be covering NCAA Division I in this comparison. We already know some of the conferences will not be playing, like the Big Ten and the Pac-12, and that other conferences will be looking to move forward with play in the fall of 2020, like the Big 12, the SEC, the ACC, the Sun Belt, the American, and Conference USA. Today's comparison will be between the NAIA and the NCAA Divisions II and III. Autonomy is defined as the state of self-governing. Do conferences in these affiliations have autonomy? On the surface, it would seem that way. Division II and Division III conferences have been putting out statements about how each is moving forward since the whole health crisis started back in March. During the summer, many, if not all, have been giving updates as to how each would be moving into the fall semester. Some stated early on that they would be postponing or suspending fall sports, and some said that they would be playing in the fall even if there were some sort of delay. So it would seem that nominally D2 and D3 leagues have autonomy. We'll get back to that. NAIA conferences have been posting releases as to their progress during this time, too. Conferences like the KCAC and the Heart of America have praised the NAI for the conference autonomy with which they have been afforded. Leagues throughout the NAIA, specifically the NAIA conferences in which football is played, have been able to make their decisions and get out that information when it's available. Almost every Division II and Division III conference has by now come out with a statement that fall sports, including football, have been suspended or postponed. And most of them, at least the latest conferences to finally pull the plug on competition in the fall, put in their releases somewhere that with the continued updates in NCAA regulations, it was just not possible to go on. As an association, the NCAA put out the Resocialization of Collegiate Sport document back in July and updated regularly with the most recent update on August 11th being a frequently asked question sheet in which the Board of Governors stated and reiterated its own authority to make decisions for the NCAA and its members and it also took away any permissive sounding language like may consider and might with the frequency of the testing necessary, the specific kind of testing to be done and the financial mountain required to climb to be able to do so for football Every Division II and Division III conference has at this point made the decision not to try to have football in the fall, saying in the release that they would be looking into the possibility of playing the sport in the spring. The American Rivers Conference in Division III said it was left with no options. The Northern Sun in Division II said in its release that it was no longer feasible. In light of all that, we could reasonably go back and revisit the first point and deduce that there really isn't conference autonomy in Division II or Division III if the guidelines given under which to exercise that autonomy are too strict to use. The NAI posted in July its guidelines and recommendations for the possibility of play in the fall, giving institutions the opportunity to plan for a return to competition and resources to aid in that planning. Like the NCAA, updates to the original document were given through the summer. But in the most recent update posted on August 13th, the NAI Council of Presidents opted to provide more flexibility for its members in considering the types of viral testing, their availability and cost, the turnaround times involved, and the local or regional public stances regarding testing that vary across the country. Given this variability and complexity, the NAI determined it was inappropriate to require a single testing protocol for all its members. Rather, the NAI strongly recommended that individual conferences and institutions consider very carefully the best way to deploy COVID testing to support the safe return to athletics. Conference autonomy for the NAI is reinforced, and it currently looks as though the NAI will also have at least some fall sports in the fall, and that includes football, with leagues including the GPAC, the KCAC, and the Heart of America moving forward as scheduled. The Sun Division of the Mid-South Conference will play a divisional schedule this semester, and the Sooner Athletic Conference will play three games of its nine-game football schedule in the fall. 
NCAA Division II and Division III championships have been canceled for fall 2020 sports, including football. Not postponed, canceled. The NAI Football National Championship will not happen in the fall, but the association has moved the title opportunity to the spring of 2021. No dates have yet been set, but the possibility of a hunt for a championship this season, at least for now, is still in play. So that's a look at these two national affiliations and their stands on college football in the fall of 2020 from the perspective of the middle of August. What do you think? Is one better than the other? Are both right? Are both wrong? Let us know in the comments section. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing to the channel Midwest Sportsnet. God bless you and have a great day.